you absolute bloody legends. Welcome back to Fat Chat. Oh my God, do we have an exciting episode today because our man, Matt Burton, is now the Cairns Ironman champion for 2024. Yeah, well. Matty, how are you? Good, mate. Good. Wait, yeah, wait, hang on. I need to get ready. I need to get ready. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. I need to get ready. We're oh, popping wow. this champagne. <laughs> Get it up. There we go. Yes! What? Yes! Yes! He's the champion! 9 a.m. in oh. Perth. Yum. Oh my God. Yes! Wow. Yeah, yes! Yeah. Yes! Tell oh, me how dude. you're feeling. Yeah, I'm, I woke at 4 a.m. after four hours sleep. So I'm, I'm actually okay. My body feels all right. I just. I, I woke, I'm going to be honest, I woke up and I put the live stream back on TV. Just to yep. see that it actually happened. <laughs> no joke. No just joke. doesn't feel real. Nah, nah, like, I don't know. It just, you don't, you, you believe you're gonna, you could achieve something, but when you go and do it in that sort of, in that fashion, it's, um, it wasn't like the other guys were going slow. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to have Kim and Tom there too, right? It's so special, mate. You travel the world on oh, your own and, and go to races and then, to win a championship race at, in in Australia, it's um, this is yeah about as good as it gets at home. Man, unbelievable! Mm-hmm. And like I was, I was following the race from as soon as I got up yesterday, I've the whole you. day I've on the phone, you. and I was uh, I was carrying on all day. But man, like it's such a long time and such a long race that anything can happen with it. Yeah, yeah. But like from the whole time that I was watching you, you just had the absolute killer look in your eye yesterday. Like you just look so confident in everything that you were doing. Um, You know, you sort of like just to wrap it up for everybody that um, maybe didn't watch the whole thing, but you sort of came out like ninth or 10th on the swim, right? Yeah. So there was uh, four guys in a lead pack and then the main chase pack I made, but we were four minutes back. I didn't know that split, but there was 12 of us in that massive group, um, which I haven't really swum with much before. So that was a, step in the right direction but four minutes is still a big gap but uh, yeah i closed that within 50k crazy and then you came steaming home on the bike uh, yeah. made up like 10 minutes to the leader um yeah. and then from the run you're sort of like five minutes out to start on off with and then just you know there, there was one guy that was sort of you know creeping on you a little bit but yeah the whole time you were so in front and just absolutely killing it and we're gonna do we'll do like a whole big yeah. race like in-depth recap um especially you know, when- later on Especially when we can like pull back the live coverage and I can talk you through a little bit of what was going on, because the yeah. dynamics on the bike when you're in a group of twelve, you you can get done for drafting right when you're within twelve meters. So I just made a choice to go to the front and it's still ride my own race, um, and that was enough to get rid of a few. And then when we caught when I caught the leaders, one of the leaders then attacked up a climb a bit earlier than I'd anticipated on attacking myself. But he split it up where just him and I went over the top together. And then we got into it. And then probably 20 k's later, he just started to... I looked back and he wasn't there. And I was like, oh, okay, now's my time. So good. Yeah. So good. The goat, the goat just yeah. comes steaming through. But I, uh, I, I can't even imagine. Down on the bike. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I just yeah. felt yeah. fantastic. I was pedaling really well. I didn't have to force it. Um when you ride really well over the back half, you can put so much time into people, and that's what I did. Yeah. But then you got to yep. run well, right? Um, yeah. It looked like your, you know, your transitions were so smooth as well. Mm. Like you knew that the, that's the first time I've like watched like a race, obviously from start to finish with the commentary, yeah. uh, and they were just sort of, you know, just saying how smooth you're looking through all of those. You knew exactly, you know, what tables you wanted to go to and grab what things. You just knew exactly. It just looked like you were just so prepared and so all over it. Um, yesterday, and you know, obviously, yeah. couldn't be any better of a, of, of a result. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I didn't feel panicked at all throughout the whole day, even through the bike aid stations. I was very clean. I didn't drop a bottle through the run. I just through the aid stations, I slowed up a bit, made sure I got it all in. It's important, right? It was hot in the sun. And then, um, when you're out on your own and you've got a group of six coming into transition five minutes back, everyone's going to come out fast to try and catch, right? It's just natural. Yeah. They shouldn't, but they do. And one guy in particular who ran a 2.37 here last year, so a very quick marathon, he came, he was the one that came the hottest. And then all I knew is I needed the gap to get to a point and then not shift. And that's when I was going to be able to, I just ran the same pace start to finish. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's ten k to go, when I was like, wow, it's still two and a half minutes. I was like, you do the math right, you're like, well, he has to run twenty to thirty seconds per k faster than me at the moment, faster. and I haven't slowed yep. down, and he's not getting any faster. So just do what you're doing. Do your thing now, and uh, you may actually win the race. <laughs> so crazy! So, like, what point? What point did you actually reckon I've got this, or did, yeah. did you think that nah, there's no way that someone's catching me from here? Eight k to go. So you go, you come through Cairns, you run out along their broad walk for a couple of k. So when I came back, I got a split, and it was still the same as the previous lap. It was like two minutes thirty, and I was like, that's. Yeah, he has to run 30 seconds a K faster to catch me. And then the There's next no two way. Ks, I ran a bit quicker. Um, and I was like, okay, one more turnaround. And then that gap was out to three minutes. And I was like, three K to go. I was like, no, nah, I, I can't be beaten. And then 1,500 meters to go, I just started to embrace the crowd a bit more to help oh. me get home. Yeah. So good, man. And like, uh, it, so they've, they've got like the race commentary guy that's sort of like around the race, yeah. you know, just giving updates as, you know, people are running past or whatever and you're running past and yeah. giving nothing, just like giving up and the, the whole race. And he's like, oh, Matt Bird's coming and oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he's going. And then like Go the next person <laughs> might be a little bit more like, oh, give him something to the, uh, to the camera. Yeah. Um, but then that last little bit, like, yeah, like you said, that last two or three Ks where I guess, mm. you know, you knew the finish line's right there and then you started getting all up and about you giving the crowd these ones and everything oh man what a I can't I, I honestly cannot even imagine how special that would have felt hey particularly after um as all the fat chat listeners know but you know i think the rest of the iron man world's only maybe yeah. you know realizing as well now how this year has been for you and that hmm. comeback story and the and the all the all the shit that you've had to get through to get to where you are it's just amazing i can't imagine what that feeling was like yeah it's my dad actually said to me you know, don't don't talk about it too much. And it's like, oh, the media will create a much bigger. You know, they'll they'll run with the story, right? It's a comeback mm. story. It's it's what we love as as people, right? It's why everyone tunes into the Olympics. It's and for me, yeah, I just had a year start away. I wouldn't wish upon anybody. You know, it's like um, a strange, really strange out start to the year, and yeah, you just hang in there and let the medical professionals do their thing. Trust in some others. And then uh, get back into it, and you just never know. Ridiculous, man! Like honestly, mm. like honestly, five months ago, visiting you in a hospital bed, mm. like pick line in your heart, <laughs> uh, thinking, "How the yeah. fuck am I, you know, even going to do this?" <laughs> never mind, you know, thinking about having one of your toes chopped off. Like, yeah. what a turnaround! Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's behind you now, right? You can look at the. As far in the past I want to look now as yesterday because it's still, it doesn't really feel real. Um, yeah, it's been, I mean, I've had a lot of people go through a lot of different adversities and I've had different type things happen over time, but this one was just weird, right? And then it almost was like, oh, maybe, maybe I won't get up from this and that'll be it. And then, um, yeah, I just got here to Cairns and I was like, oh, I just believe I could win this race. Like, I feel... Like, I've come up really well. And, you know, the, during the race, you, you, you stick at it and then you want to... You, you can't get ahead of yourself, right? The marathon's a long way to run and, like, anything can happen. But then, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's stuck and I was turning over well and... And then I saw the Tom and Kim and it's just such a nice reality now. <laughs> And uh, Tom and Kim weren't there for when you won because you've only won one other Ironman race, and that was Busterton Twenty One. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you know you did amazing there, but that was when Tom was being born, so Kim wasn't yep. even there to celebrate it with you. So mm. that must have just brought a whole another level of um, excitement and joy mm. and happiness, just having them actually there to celebrate it with you as well. Because as we all know, like you know, they're the ones that uh, that are properly in the in the trenches with you and they ride all the highs all the lows um and um you know it just must have been so crazy to actually be able to celebrate it with them too yeah i mean i knew it's funny hey on the bike i was like well oh, i got this motorbike with me right this live coverage and i'm like kimmy's going to be at home watching this and she will be as nervous as anybody i'm not nervous i'm in the moment right i'm getting it done and it's like now i owe it to them to stay out here 
and then you get running and you're like, oh, okay, even if I go podium, it's a good effort. And then 20, 20K goes past and I'm still leading by, you know, two and a half to three minutes. And I'm like, oh, well, first or second still good. And then you get to 10K to go and the lead's still there. And I'm like, well, now you have to win. You know, you can't throw it in now. They, they're depending on it. They've been waiting all day. Tom hasn't slept today. Yeah. He's, been, he's had to watch the race all day. So. <laughs> but it was lovely. I, I ran past him a few times and he's hanging over the fence. It's like, oh, Dada, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so I scary. reckon he definitely, like, I reckon he's definitely understanding what's going on. And, like, imagine, like, when you guys are talking about, obviously, you know, you sit down and you're, um, you know, much older and you're reflecting on all your Iron Man stuff. Like, could you imagine if he's like thinking that could be like a first memory that he's going like, Oh my yeah. God. Oh, I remember that. I remember waving to you. I remember that. Like how that's, that's pretty special as well. I hope so. <laughs> Cause it's bloody hurts. Yeah. You know, I had a few comments from some of the uh, pro athletes on course. Um, you know, they were behind, a fair way behind, but they would sort of, as they were running the other way, they'd be like, you've only got to hurt for another 40 minutes. You know, and then you look at it, you're like, yeah, it's true. It's nothing. You know, if you're doing 40 hours a week, 40 minutes isn't... Uh, isn't a lot. You know, it's just a bit of a, you know, a dive in the ocean. But, um, yeah, but when you're still, your quads are starting to tighten, your glutes are <laughs> grabbing on you, your chafes, buddy, ripping your feet apart. <laughs> it's like, no. oh, just stop. And then you finish. That's what the biggest relief is, a couple hundred minutes to go. Okay, winning's lovely. It takes the pain away. But the fact I just want to stop. stop. Yeah, <laughs> I've had enough. Yeah, man, so crazy. So, like, what is what? What did you end up doing like last night once you finished? Because I kind of, you know, obviously the emotions are up. You're just so wired after the race from just all the adrenaline and everything as well. Like, you can't sleep, and you know, I, I can imagine you're just sort of walking around almost in a little bit of shock and disbelief. Like, what the fuck just happened? Mm. Um, talk us through last night. What actually happened after? Oh, uh, you just come home and have a shower. Um, yeah. <laughs> go, go back and have some dinner with some mates. Uh, yeah, some of my Kiwi mates. And now some other guys that have flown over from Perth as well. Um, and then, yeah, you got to go pick your bike up, get it home. I actually stayed down there, hand some medals out for a while. Nice. Catch up with them. You know, the boys have come over to the, the finish line as well. Just there's some free beer on tap for them, so... Beautiful. Uh, Love and then, that. Yeah, I went. I think we went to sleep about midnight, and I woke at about ten to four. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, just... Clean the clean the bike and wait for the coffee shop to open. And <laughs> now I got to go it's... to the media for the other. Yeah. It, man, it's the weirdest thing that like after like you know I've only done the one obviously, but like you cannot sleep after, and you like mm. you're just thinking about the whole day. Like it feels mm. it was it's actually like I felt it was way harder for the next like twelve hours after than what it was for my twelve hours doing it because. You're just there thinking about it, and going, oh my god, and all the emotions, and you're thinking about this and that, and yeah. so um, much waste just, product yeah. in your body too. You need to yeah, move it. So I know. I need to get to the pool today. Just get moving. Back here. The, the work never stops. Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> the, the the metal might hold you down a little bit. Yeah, before. maybe the trophy. I got a boomerang yeah. actually. <laughs> So yeah, what does that yeah. mean for um uh you know for the next little bit for you now? So you've got this yeah, means you qualify for the uh for the world championships in Kona? No, nah, I'd already qualified in Busso. Already qualified. Oh right, so, nice, nice. So this I was just a level up. Yeah, this is just to see just to get racing this year and then yeah, I, I mean I'm not gonna we're not gonna change anything. So I've got the ITU long course worlds in Townsville end of August and then Kona's yeah. the end of October. I'm just gonna we're gonna keep it real simple. Um you know, Chris has been fantastic. So, yeah, we, we just love Chris. Uh, yeah, we love Chris. So we just stick it, stick at what's worked so far. And uh, I'm good when I'm training at home, and just enjoy a bit of winter for a bit, and then uh, yeah, get get into it, suffer through the winter, and and be in Hawaii by the start of October. Yeah, sweet. So like. I reckon like you sort of said it in a couple of like interviews and that that you were doing, but like personally and sort of, you know, here and, and I'm sure the pod listeners will agree as well, you mm. know, talking from you from the start of when we started, you know, checking in and all this sort of stuff like this. And I guess even like Bustleton of last year, I reckon there's been like a total, like a little bit of like an attitude change or like a different sort of emotional feeling with you racing now, because it was like, you know, Bustleton last year, you're still hard. You're the still most hardcore man I've ever met in my entire life. Mm. None. It's not even close. Right. Mm. But I reckon that, you know, this is just for me looking in that having the stuff go on at the start of the year, 
and go through that sort of adversity, not quite sure what's going to happen with that and being quite, you know, unpredictable and uncertain. Mm. All that work that you've had to, you know, go through and put in and, and, you know, I guess like, you know, feel a little bit more appreciative of, wow, my body's healthy and how good is triathlon and, you know, just sort of, I can feel like there's this new level of like love that you're, that you're giving it, which is like so awesome to see. Is that like a, is that like a fair um, description yeah. or? Um... I think not racing, not having the opportunity to race a lot this year now. It's more so I'm racing everything like it's my last. That's how it feels. So it's like, yeah. if it was your last race, you want to enjoy it, right? Regardless. It's like, just go with what your best on the day, but make sure you take time to actually take it in and know where you are. Um, Cause yeah, it's could all end quickly, right? Yep. Absolutely. Oh, Is that Tom? That's Tom. Uh, hey, Tom. Uh, Kim, Kim, Kim sent me a video of uh, Tom, um, uh, I was saying, you know, message Kim and I was like, oh, how's it going? And you know, how are you feeling? She goes, oh, yeah, I'm a bit nervous. Hey, Tom. Hey, How are you, mate? Hey. Oh, we won. We, we won. won. Yes, we yay. won. Go, we won. <laughs> you go see, mummy. <laughs> Kim, uh, Kim sent me a video, uh, and uh, and she said, you know, Tom's Tom, you know, Tom's not nervous. He's just there. No, he's in the pool. pool and having, having a good time. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. Sw- yeah, he swims. He swims like his dad does. So, yeah, great. <laughs> oh, mate, so good. So, what's the day um, and everything look like for you now? Because obviously, like you know, I can imagine everybody's wanting a piece of you. You got some media stuff. Have you got more events? Like, what what's the what's the vibe in Cairns right now for you? Yeah, more media. Oh, media starts shortly, and then mm. uh, your exclusive, your first. Yeah, of course. And then make the sure award. you drop some fat chat in there as well. Just make sure it's like everyone. Oh yeah, we're doing the full thing on fat chat. Make sure mm. we drop a few. I names. will. I've got to go to the awards <laughs> later, and when I'm accepting my award, I will drop that in. Um, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, so that's this afternoon. That takes over the afternoon. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Sounds good, mate. Well, yeah. um, I was so excited. I was there. I was watching it all day. I was in Frio. Frio was going ballistic. High five people. Oh, high five. <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, was, and man, I had people. So I was sitting on the step. The Beck was like vintage shopping, and I was like, I'm watching the race. I'm sitting there, uh, and I'm you know going nuts about it all. And people were coming up and going, Oh, did the, Matt Matt just won the race? Like there was like <laughs> four sets of people. They come. I was like, Oh yeah. And they're like, Oh, we're watching it too. So like it was a thing. <laughs> yeah, right it was a thing. Yeah, it was a real yeah, thing. That's so, nice. Thank you, people from. That was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, but, the support's uh, been unbelievable. Like, has it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's amazing, mate. The, from home and then just Australia wide. Yeah. yeah. Probably globally, really. It's like, yeah. I'm a nobody, or I feel like I'm a nobody, and yet if I inspire a couple of people to hang in there. You know, it's better than it's better than none. So, absolutely, mate. The fucking goat doing goat things. We're back on top, baby. <laughs> back on top. So, so now, yeah. good, and it's only just the start. How good is that? But um, now we're gonna do. We're gonna catch up, maybe um, you know, tomorrow, and we'll do yep. like a full race, uh, like mm-hmm. breakdown and everything for everyone, um, yep. exclusive to Fat Chat, obviously. Uh, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to that, mate. Can't wait. I've got a thousand and one questions myself. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, go, 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 get out there. Enjoy Thank it. You. Congratulations for everyone at Fat Chat. Congratulations for me. I love it. It was so Thanks, good. exciting things I've ever watched. Uh, and uh, love your work, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. Thanks for the support. Buddy Thank champions! you, Fat Chat family. Yes, I'm going to go get that champagne bottle again. I'm yeah, going to finish that. Yeah, going on Monday. Great job, mate. Hey guys, Dan from Backchat here. While Jared's mum is a real doctor, this segment is for entertainment purposes only. For specific medical conditions, make sure you seek the advice of your own doctor. If you've snapped your banjo string or wonder why your nipples are so hairy, you need to book an appointment with Dr. Magic. Magic, 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 magic. Not only does he create the song, he then (laughs) replays it back every time we listen to it. Just ad libs as well, you know, just providing a bit of extra. He gets very excited, (laughs) tries to bring a bit of jazz to it. Welcome back, though. Um, Mum of magic. (laughs) Mom. Mum of magic. (laughs) For for another another episode of Dr. Magic, we've had... uh, it's been an overwhelming amount of uh, oh. people asking questions. It's a favourite. It's a favourite segment from everyone. And I look forward to it because it's just like I actually feel quite tired after you left because your soothing voice. 
My soothing voice? Yeah, it helps oh. help make yeah. calming, feel calming, calming voice. voice. Yeah. yeah, well, she's not like that at home sometimes. <laughs> Trust me. Karen goes from zero to 100. You've seen Gordon Ramsay? Uh, she's a little bit like that at home she's sometimes. She's the one cooking your dinner? I yeah. You say nothing bad. It's my Scottish background. What can mm. I say? <laughs> We've got some questions, though. We do? Yeah. Um, am I starting? Or yeah, yeah, you I'm can start. starting, yes. Wow. Can you explain phantom limbs? Phantom limbs. Yeah, well... Not Batman limbs, phantom phantom limbs. A phantom limb means that, you know, someone's had an amputation um, and they... And the nerve endings are still actually um, perceived by the brain. Yeah. So you still feel like that that leg is Ah. there perhaps, but it's not. And you can also still feel pain from it. And that's because, you know, when you amputate a limb, those nerves are not very happy about it, yep. the nerves that we're supplying. Mm, and, they're still, they and those nerves are still coming into the spinal cord and they're still giving messages to the brain. Yeah, wow. So you Crazy. can sometimes, some phantom limb can just, it could be pain or it could be just that you feel it there. You can feel hot and you can feel cold. Oh, my and God. You can feel touch. Yeah, wow. it's pretty amazing. And it that tends, is to, crazy. tends to be more common, of course, in the first year or so after right, an right. amputation and it may settle down. Is it just because it's like that that signal is still being fired and then as it, right. as big as your yep. body gets used to it, it stops firing that. That's right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Oh, very that's quite contextual mm. with the we're in Olympic here, Paralympics yeah. fall just after and yeah, yeah. that's that's super interesting. Absolutely. You know, it is. It's, um, that would be something else to live with, wouldn't it? Wouldn't Could you yeah. imagine? It would be. Still I mean, some people do, in fact, live live with that all their lives. The whole time, mm, right? But, wow. But most people would would uh, would, would sort of reduce with so, time, yeah. but it certainly can cause a lot of problems for people. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Doctor Magic, why do I bruise so easily? Um. Yeah. Well, bruising is is worse as you get older, mm. and it's worse. In, it looks worse in women, mainly because in men they have a, a thicker collagen layer. That protects the blood vessels. So when you, I mean, a bruise is caused by you know hitting the skin and damaging yep. the blood vessel. You get a release of blood under the skin, creates all. So those females colors. are more likely to be. So women are to more bruise. likely to bruise. Yeah. Right. And, um, and I think you tend to see it in people that are probably you know fairer skinned. You know, with the blonde blonde um, um, females rather than people that are you know sort of more olive complexion. Yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Crazy. And it's also can be a blood disease too, right? Oh, sure. If it's not of clotting. course, yeah. of course. If you, I mean, if you're bruising easily, sure, yeah, you, yeah. You do. If this is something new, definitely go and go get, and get checked, checked out, out and yep. make sure that there's nothing. Oh, thank you, Matt. Sorry, I'm not uh, trying to scare anyone absolutely. at home, but if it's no, severe, absolutely. If you yeah. suddenly start bruising and it's not your norm, absolutely, yep. uh, make sure that you don't have any underlying mm. um, lymphatic problem. Mm. But don't right. just start or punching yourself in the arm. No, yeah. don't do that yeah. either. <laughs> That'll hurt also. <laughs> what is a tick? I've been told I have some. These are face twitches, not like a tick yeah. from the bush. Yeah, T I C as opposed to T I C K TikTok. And oh, <laughs> she knows. Yeah, she knows. She's <laughs> up. With, she's on TikTok now. I want to know her. what causes them. What causes them? Uh, well, um, probably they can be induced by stress, anxiety. But once they start, it's hard to it's hard mm. to stop them. I mean, the ticks are very common in childhood, and it can just be. You know, blinks or a twitch, or some people actually will, will throw out a word as well. Um, that can be a movement of your neck um, or, a, or a click. Um, so there, there's lots of different types of ticks. They're harmless. Mm. They're generally harmless. I do the blinks. You do the blinks, yeah. I do this. Wow. You notice my double blinks sometimes? No. You'll notice it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm you like this. you'll notice Jerry's double <laughs> Are blinks. Are you You're doing the blinks. Yeah, uh, he does the blinks. Infamously, you have a few actually. You do like little. Yeah, I know. Like I these sometimes. Is it Lewis Capaldi? He was yeah. the most recent, I guess, from an infamous point of view. From, yeah. And it was trending when he was got emotional at that concert because yeah, everyone was singing his song. Right. He started to, to twitch a little bit and they were just saying it's just that. You know, right, yeah. he's his ticks. Yeah. That was his ticks. That was yeah. his tick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, generally they're, they're um, you know, they're, they're, they're benign. There is a, a condition called Tourette's syndrome where people... Um, That's what he's got. That's what he's got. He's got Does Tourette's. he? He's got Tourette's, yeah. Right. So, so, so it can be... Well, but he hides just, it through... Or it doesn't show very often. Uh, you don't just have to swear and stuff, do you? For no, no, Tourette's, no. Well, it's Tourette's like just Tourette's syndrome. Probably is just a, is just really ticks. You know, yeah, okay. Go, but okay. probably something that's more impacting. Right. Impacting I've seen him on talk shows and stuff yeah. though, and he's fine. Oh yeah, he was Whereas, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, right. Like does his yeah. head like this the whole time? Does his head. Yeah, right. I guess yeah it's so a, sad. It's, it's like a soothing wow. habit, I suppose, and um, very difficult to stop. Though. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And uh, last question, Dr. Magic. Why does the sound of a chalkboard or styrofoam make me want to be sick? Make you want to be sick? Right? Yeah. Well, the, certainly the, the frequency of sound <sighs> the of a chalk going down really? the board. This nah. is from you. Do, no, sorry, this isn't, sorry, yeah, continue. Yeah, well, the frequency of sound is in the range that actually 
amplifies in yeah. your ear. So it amplifies really loud. It's perceived by the brain as a dangerous yeah. or frightening oh, yeah. sound. And so a lot of people get shivery with it or kind of, you know, have you ever never had that? No, no it's dark. Blood runs cold. No, I mean, I don't use over ear headphones, so obviously it's not an issue for me there. <laughs> Star- yeah, Styrofoam's really? fine. Star- Star- it, that's fine yeah. for me. The chalk is actually okay for me. Do you know what my thing is? What's that? Wooden cutlery on my teeth. Oh, right. Wooden? <laughs> Wooden cutlery on my teeth. I can't it's called stand z- cutlery on plates, yeah. China, it's, but... It's called xylophobia. Oh. Really? I, the thought of it makes me want to be sick right now. Wooden I can feel it. on your lip. On my, like, I, can feel it on, I can feel it on my two teeth. Right. And it goes all the way oh, back so down right. my neck. Wooden, wow. wooden cutlery. Wow. Or okay. the paddle pop stick. Oh, oh really? paddle, paddle pop sticks. I feel yeah, sick. I've had that before. Is that a thing? Well, yeah. Well, oh, oh, I get it so much. I've just lost my two front teeth. They're just like going now. <laughs> oh, I love it. I actually enjoy putting the oh, thing on the roof of my mouth. Ooh. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. I actually I, have one in the car. Oh, oh, wooden, I think man. they're just oh. uncomfortable feelings. Unco- Is that uncomfortable right? Yeah. Sounds that, that, your, that your brain And like cardboard plates and shit. Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah. Just stop paper plates. Stop. <laughs> stop. No, you know how, to get how do you go stop. to a barbecue? <laughs> no, I can't. Like, we, no. Don't, we don't do paper plates. We haven't done paper plates. No, nah, paper wow. plates. We're in the doctor's house, oh, mate. We don't do sorry. paper plates around there. <laughs> no, we, 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 oh, don't come to our place for dinner. You and Tom, you, he'd be just <laughs> bullying oh, you. Oh, oh stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Okay, okay, we need to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Magic, thank you so much for coming on in and answering all of our questions. Uh, if anyone wants to contribute, send your questions on in to any of the Fat Chat uh, social channels. And thank you very much, Dr. Magic. Pleasure. It's Matt. great to not have a couple of uh, sex related ones for the last <laughs> yeah, few episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to have you along. Oh, no. Welcome back, Coach Chris. I feel Coach Chris. I actually feel weird calling him that, but everyone needs a title when they we come love on Coach here. Coach Chris, we love him. He's yeah. been a Bo- <laughs> body magic popular. refers to himself as body magic. So. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Chris, it is. Um, yeah, we're lucky enough to have you back for a few more questions. Going through, I guess, from a sports science point of view. Oh, your opinion, the researcher's opinion, rather than just us discussing, yep. you know, what I've seen in my short journey. Yep. Mistakes. Everyone's making them. You know, you live and learn is what, what we talk about. But for you, having been in it for 22 years now, and, you, and I know you've worked a lot with, uh, you know, not just endurance, but strength work as well. Yep. What, what would you say you see as people's biggest mistakes who are, are just beginning a journey, whether it be endurance or strength? Um. um. Comparing themselves to others would probably be the biggest one. Mm. That would probably really? be that, that, is, that yeah. is good. Yeah, uh, that would probably be the biggest. Like you straight know, away. Yeah, yeah. straight away. Uh, you're starting out and you want to go running with your mate that's run seven marathons. Yep. Like that's just that's going to kill you. Yep. Or your first your you know your first day in the gym and you're over there you know on the mm. squat rack. Load me up. Yep. Let's do it, you know. And you see it, though. That just keeps physios in business. Comparison is the thief of joy. That's what it is. Just gets go. in your head and you just go like, you, there's always someone that can be better or, or you're looking at someone yeah. above you that's quicker or faster or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in the endurance space, not only do you have training groups, but you have Strava. Yep. Right? It's a, True. It's a social media Comparison. for endurance yeah. sport, right? And yep. so straight away, people who might just begin a journey see that someone runs this pace or pushes this power. Yep. They get this magical number like, oh, well, I'll, I should be able to push that. Mm. Just beginning, right? Yeah. And then it just becomes this like this unknown. I'll give you a great metric. example with Strava, particularly that I see with your top guys. Mm. And it's and it'll it be the same all the way down. I've got, I know guys that won't run hilly <laughs> routes because it brings the average pace down. Oh, and true. so people are going to look at, you know, the average pace and go, Oh, look yeah, at him. They th- well, they He's think that today. people are... Lo- so rather they than think, going and getting yeah. huge benefit, running hills is probably the best bang for buck that you can get as an endurance runner. Mm-hmm. Okay, If you're running marathons... That's why you live in the hill. That's just run it. every every week. You should be building up your long run. And if on top of that you can make it a hilly long run, you've got massive bang for buck as far as strength endurance, muscular mm-hmm. endurance goes. But a lot of guys won't do it, or a lot of a lot of people won't do it. I should say, um, this is so true because the average pace for a hilly run is going to be about twenty seconds a kilometre slower that's than if you go sport. and run along yeah. the boardwalk, down along Cot, or wow. or you know run the bike path or whatever. Yep. Yeah, so that's a great example. That's of a good one. How you yeah. have how Strava Strava it does more harm than good. Mm. It, it, it really really does. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What other ones have you got? Anything else for beginners? Um, 
not doing strength training. If you, uh, so, uh, yeah. if 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 I'm in, if I'm speaking about particularly your 16 week couch to yep. to half marathon people, include strength training. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I would go as far as to say, from a sports science point of view, just do just do strength training for life. Yep, and then add whatever you like to do as sport on top of that. Yep, um, just strength training is something from a bang for buck, hormonally, muscle recruitment, metabolically, bone density at a cellular yeah. level, bone density. There is so no, there's no downside to yep. doing strength work. If if I had my way, and what I do now with people is, it, I'll, I'll predominantly work with, you know. Buff Eds and mm. egomaniacs and yep. whatever that swim bike That's run, right, everybody. The but but predominantly, I mean, I make I, I make a lot of it, but predominantly the type of athlete that I work with is an A type personality mm. that will do anything. They they're highly driven, highly motivated, and yet I can't get those guys to go to the gym because they're like, well, I'm giving up a swim bike run session, mm. or I'm giving up a a key. So now what I do is I'm like I put the strength in first. And then I build everything in around that. Around people, that. I'm like, wow. people also think they're going to put on weight from being in the gym. Yeah. But I think it's important to elaborate or simplify. Strength doesn't mean you need to go into the gym for an hour and a half. No. No, it can be very simple. Yep. But it, it's some, purely to help in. with, yeah. And, and I'll go even as far as to say strength doesn't mean you need to go to the gym. Yeah. Yep. So if you're, a couch, if you're a couch to 16-weeker and you're listening to this and you're going, oh, hang on a second, you know, I've, I've now haven't, I can't afford a gym membership. Nah. That's fine. Yep. Go, get onto YouTube and and just stick on uh, strength programs for beginners. Body weight strength programs. Yep. Because uh, people don't realise have... that you can use just the resistance from your own body weight. Body weight. Oh, just just if perfect. you're a beginner, yeah. it's all about the movement, right? Yeah. Because it's calisthenics. Yeah. Mm. Right. Push ups, yeah. burpees. Yeah. Slow squats. the movement down so it becomes isometric. Yeah. You know, it's Love like. It. Yeah. I yeah, love it. You use that's more great. eccentric, yeah, eccentric loading by just slowing things down. You know, like I love that's, it. That's yeah, it's a great, great tip. So comparison strength training. This is why we have Coach Chris in <laughs> because he just puts up nuggets every time that he's coming on. He's amazing. Any uh, questions for Coach Chris? Make sure you send them on into Fat Chat uh, or me and Matt, uh, and uh, we'll make sure we'll get uh, the sports science uh, guru to answer the, the next time he's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, now. But really, what everybody really loves <laughs> oh. about Coach, Coach Chris segment. Yeah, this is the last one, everybody. So if you haven't been Thank following along, God. Chris, back in a former life, used to be on uh, Neighbours Home and Away. A couple of other little stints. You might have seen him. Knows on Margot Robbie. Ads. Well, yeah, knows her well. Not. I've heard. It, let me just yep. say these these buffets get me. <laughs> So we've got a scene from when he was in Neighbours. We've had two parts already. Make sure you go listen back to the other Fat Chat episodes. But we're coming to the climax of the scene, right? We're coming to the ending. And I love this part because let's say a little, little, you know, rundown of everything first. So first date with Chloe, with your Harris, um, your, your, your character's name's Harrison. First date with Chloe's looking promising. But then it comes out that you've got a wife. What are you doing on the date? Oh, my God. we could be, And that's the cliffhanger that we left it on. So now we're back at the cafe um, and... And uh, we're back at the camera. The camera pans to some extras who were, uh, who's telling the waitress who is not wearing waitress appropriate clothing at it. all that, that they would like to dine in. But then the waitress proceeds to walk away and not take an order. It was bizarre. Oof. Anyway, back on over to Chris. Go. I know it seems like a strange thing for a married man to do to seek out the company of another woman, not a married woman. By the way. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got that wrong. I'm not sorry, married. Sorry. Another woman. Oh, gee, he's yeah. good. He's sharp. He's I've, sharp. I've seen Stranger. Oh, Chloe <laughs> says sarcastically. I am scarred for life. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm not looking to cheat on my wife, especially with you. <laughs> what? Oh. Neither emotionally or physically. What? This is unusual. Yeah. Then what are you looking for? <laughs> what are you looking for? My friends are not the sort of people you can have an honest and vulnerable conversation with. It's all business and bravado. Oh my God, that was exactly how he said it on the show. <laughs> Wait a minute. Could Harrison actually be a good guy? <laughs> they sound like lame friends. <laughs> oh, Chloe giggles. <laughs> Well, Orion's the best of a bad lot. So when I heard him speaking about how you'd given a, given him a fresh perspective on things, well, I thought I'd give it a shot. And it's a lot less confronting oh, than seeing a God. therapist. The oh, audience so is I'm uplifted with this revelation. Thank God. He's not a home wrecker after all. Oh, Jesus. Well, all right. Without laying down on the couch, tell me <laughs> about your wife. <laughs> 
Harrison giggles. Yeah, go give Dude, us I haven't giggled in like 40 in years. And inhales, <laughs> seemingly <laughs> at ease, and the <laughs> awkward miscommunication is now over. Uh, and yet, Harrison, go. She's lovely. She's been a real safety blanket to me <laughs> and me to her. But lately, I'm just struggling, and I don't even know why. <laughs> Maybe I can help you figure out where things went wrong. Oh, can you? <laughs> oh, I'm still oh, trying. Oh, no. Chloe's I'm brother Mark has rocked up, who stalked Harrison's Facebook profile and saw <laughs> he was married Mark. and thought this meetup was a date with his sister. He comes storming in. I'll be Mark, all right? Uh, uh, Chloe, you're making a mistake. And you, as I'm pointing at Harrison, you're a disgusting excuse of a man. Harrison looks perplexed. <laughs> Mark, you either leave now or I'll let your wife know that you're on a date with another woman. Oh my God! Harrison gets up off the chair. But Mark, you wouldn't look, looking concerned. <laughs> like you, you've highlighted that I should look concerned. Here, here I am. Ready. And then the scene ends. Oh no! Scenes ends, oh. and Mark is looking like an idiot in the cafe for arguing, and uh, and it turns out that Harrison was a good guy after all, and that that's was Chris. Cool. Well done. And that's when you the most important thing to remember is I was a good guy. You were the good guy, after never after in all. doubt. After all, that was humiliating. Coach Chris, you're a legend. You're a very Thank good sport. Well on. done. <laughs> Know what you're walking into. The anxiety that you feel when you're in there, don't you reckon it feels like if someone's going to be eliminated, it feels like you're going to fucking die, don't you think? Yeah. Like it feels like yeah. that person is about to be killed. Like it's yeah. like. <laughs> I, like when someone's leaving, you're like crying your eyes out like they're dying or something. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just sad. And it's because you're so stuck in that, in that world in there where it's like, you know, you want to make it to the end. You want to be in a relationship. You want to be in a couple. Like it's, it's like you know, shown and said to you so many times. Like you know, you're vulnerable if you're single. You be you be evicted from the island immediately. All this type of stuff. The words that it use scares the shit out of you. Yeah. So up to the uh, the campfires. I've never felt that anxious in my life. Yep. In my life. But it's yeah. crazy, hey, and you don't you don't understand. I, I said this to you as well before. You don't understand the feeling until you're there because this sounds crazy. Us talking, anybody listening goes, it can't be that bad. When you're there, yeah. it feels like you're gonna die. Like your world yeah. is ending. Like it's yeah. Like, yeah. you just cannot like comprehend what that feels <laughs> like. <laughs> Unexplained. It's, it's that campfire, and you just go. They, they, they just throw you off. They throw you off the side. Insane. And then it's just it. Wow. And you always, whenever someone leaves, you're always wondering, like, what the hell are they doing right now? Like, like I wonder if they're all right and shit. But you just don't know because you can't find, you can't talk to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, some other little show secrets, and I'd love to hear, you know, like, what you found sort of difficult with this mm -hmm. as well. Um, you Obviously, you don't have any contact with your family members, which was wild. Mm -hmm. I will never go. I think I was away for, like, 41 days or something. I'll never go 41 days without speaking to my family members ever again in my entire life. Let's be nah. prisoner. Even prisoners get a phone call per day. Yeah, they get a um, phone call. <laughs> so, uh, so there was that. But also, time feels like it's so slow. How did time feel like for you in there? Dude, like, And we, we, we all said it, like, one day it would feel like three days, and three days would feel like a week and a half at yeah. least. Yep. So much happened throughout those days that you'd be talking to someone and then they'll mention something that happened. You're like, far how long ago was that? Like you say, like it's like like last week or something. And it was literally the day before or the day before that. It's crazy. It, it goes so slow. And and also having no concept of what time it actually is yeah, just doesn't help at all. Nah, you it know? is you it is so weird. Up. The weirdest yeah. thing. Literally, like we 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 going to bed at all hours of the night, and I remember you warned me about that as well, saying that you're going to be staying up late, and like you you weren't joking. Like we watched the the moon rise and set before we went to sleep. Like yep. we watched the moon go away. Like it's it's like you, at that point you have no clue of the time. And it's uh, like you're it's like I've, and, and how I describe it, it's like being on a bender without any of the fun. It's like you're yeah. fizzled at like three and four in the morning, and you don't know what's going on. And you just want to go to sleep, and you just can't. And they won't let you you're like oh it's I shocking they do it on purpose because at one point at one point in the night it feels like like you said like it feels like you've been on a night out and you just have like this like next bit of like kind of just like i, I wouldn't even know it's like second nature just like awakeness where you just like not really there but you are and you just kind of like going through it and that's when obviously some of the saucy stuff happens yes you know, yes to the room and you talk to the camera and you kind of tell what's on your mind and stuff yes. when you're tired have to be on all the time i feel yeah. like that was the hardest bit like the camera's on all the time you have to be on all the time you can't be like you're like a robot like you kind of have to be switched on i think that's the most exhausting mm. part